আসসালামু আলাইকুম দিস ইজ মাকসুদুর রহমান লেকচারার ইন কেমিস্ট্রি বরিশাল ক্যাডেট কলেজ বরিশাল ওয়েলকাম ইউ অল এট মাই অনলাইন ক্লাস আই হোপ অল ক্যাডেটস ইউ আর ওয়েল অ্যান্ড ইট ইজ ভেরি নেসেসারি টু কিপ ইউর সেলফ অ্যালং উইথ ইউর ফ্যামিলি ফ্যামিলি মেম্বার্স ইনসাইড ইউর রোম ফর অ্যাভয়েডিং দ্য রানিং প্যান্ডেমিক কোভিড নাইনটিন ওকে নাও আই এম গোয়িং টু ডিসকাস দি chemical reaction chapter chapter 8 for class 8 and in the at the end of this lesson you will be able to learn how energy transformation occur through chemical reaction and you can also explain the dry cells and energy transformation in dry cell and you can also explain the electrolysis process and its uses so now what is chemical reaction you know that a chemical reaction is a process in which one or more substances react with each other and form new compounds the substances that are react with each other are called reactants and the substances that are produced by the reaction of reactants are called products and the properties of products are totally different from the reactants here is an example if carbon and oxygen react with each other we get carbon dioxide so carbon is a non metallic it is solid and black on the other, other hand oxygen is non metallic substance it is gaseous and it helps to burn and breathe so when carbon and oxygen we get carbon dioxide so what are the properties of carbon dioxide we know that carbon dioxide is gaseous substance it is when dissolved in water it forms carbonic acid so we can say that carbonic carbon dioxide is acidic in nature it has another properties to retard the burn and breath so we can say that when reactants react with each other form a compound of new properties this is chemical reaction so what is chemical reaction a chemical reaction is a process in which one or more substances react with each other and form new compounds of new properties now how energy transformation occur in a reaction according to the modern view of chemical reaction we know that during chemical reaction bonds between atoms in the reactants must be broken and the atoms of molecules are reassembled into products by forming new bonds so energy is absorbed to break bonds and energy is evolved when bonds are formed so if for a reaction for a reaction if energy required to break bonds is less than the energy evolved on making new bonds energy will be evolved and we get this energy as heat this reaction we call exothermic reaction so what is exothermic reaction the reaction in which energy will be evolved is called exothermic reaction and when if a reaction energy required to break the bonds is much more than the energy evolved on making new bonds then for that reaction energy will be absorbed and this energy absorption occurred by absorbing heat and this reaction is called endothermic reaction so what is endothermic reaction a reaction in which energy will be absorbed is called endothermic reaction now if you put your hand near the burning candle you feel hot again if the candle is ignited in the dark things become visible so therefore we can say that we feel hot because the burning candle produces heat and we can see around us because the candle produces light so why we get light energy and heat energy because we know that candle is a chemical substance it is composed of carbon and hydrogen again carbon and the, the compound that is produced from carbon and hydrogen are called hydrocarbon so candle is the hydrocarbon when it burns in presence of oxygen we get carbon dioxide water during this formation of carbon dioxide and water energy between these two compounds breaks down and during formation of carbon dioxide and water molecule energy will be evolved and in that case in this reaction energy needed to break these bonds is less than the energy evolved 
for formation of carbon dioxide and water molecule. And this extra energy is evolved as heat energy and light energy. So we can say that chemical reaction cause transformation of energy. I have another example for you. If you take five grams of lime and 40 grams of water by using dropper, now you touch the beaker with hand gloves. Do you find any difference after adding water? Yes. You get the beaker is getting very hot and the solution is bubbling as happens to boiling water, like this figure. Here, if you add water to lime, the formula of lime is CaO, that means calcium oxide. When water added to lime, it produces chemical, it in this in that case, there is a chemical reaction and produce calcium hydroxide and heat energy. Therefore, the beaker become very hot. So we can say that during chemical reaction, energy breaks down and energy form. form. And if the energy evolve, then the energy needed to break the bonds, that extra energy will be evolved as heat energy or light energy. In this case, this extra energy we get as heat energy. So we can say that by chemical reaction, energy will be transformed from one form to another form. Okay, now, now I'm going to discuss about dry cell. What is dry cell? A dry cell is a portable source of electrical energy. We use dry cell in torchlight, remote controller, toy cars, and in many electric machines. And it was developed in 1886 by the German scientist Karl Gessner. So now, question arises: how dry cells be prepared? Set first, we have to mix thoroughly ammonium chloride, charcoal powder, and manganese dioxide with little amount of water to make a paste. Then this paste is taken in a cylindrical zinc container, cylindrical shaped zinc container, like this figure. Here is the zinc con cylindrical zinc container. Now, a carbon rod is introduced at the center of the container in such a way that it does not touch the, it does not touch the zinc container. And lastly, at the top of the carbon rod, there is a metal cap. And this upper portion is covered by a wrapper. By this process, you can prepare dry cell. So now question, how dry cell works? So in a dry cell, we have seen that there is an anode that is zinc, there is zinc container. It acts as an anode and cathode is carbon rod coated with mixture of car charcoal powder and manganese dioxide. And another one is that is electrolytes and electrolytes is, is paste of ammonium chloride. It acts as a electrolytes. So in a dry cell, we have three things. One is anode, cathode, another one is electrolytes. So in anode, zinc rod lost two electrons and form zinc ion. And this zinc ion will mix with the paste. So zinc lost two electron and we get zinc two plus ion. This zinc, uh, these two electron move to the external circuit and come to a cathode. And in cathode, we know that there is a carbon rod coated with charcoal powder and manganese dioxide. So this manganese dioxide receive that two electron and produce Mn2O3. Here you can say that ammonium ion only helps to reaction of manganese dioxide. In that case, manganese dioxide accept electron and produce Mn2O3, ammonium ion converts to ammonia gas and water molecule. And ammonium ion only helps to complete the reduction process of manganese dioxide. And carbon rod conveys the produced electron from anode to cathode. And this flow of electron, we know that the flow of electron is called electricity. In this way, when zinc lost two electron and this electron travel through the external circuit. And if there is a bulk, 
the bulb lighten. So this ex this electron free electron, this produced electron when passes from the external energy, external so uh, external circuit, and to reach cathode. There uh, so circuit completed, and there is a flow of electron, and we know that flow of electron is called electricity. So we get electricity from dry cell. So if we need current, we can connect this dry cell, then above reaction will take place and we will get current. And 1.5 volt electric potential is found from dry cell. So now, what is electrolysis? In dry cell, we have seen that there is a anode that is zinc, number two, cathode, that is carbon dot surrounded by a mixture of charcoal powder and manganese dioxide, number three, electrolytes, that is paste of ammonium chloride. So in this reaction, zinc is spontaneously donate two electrons when circuit fill up. And in cathode, manganese dioxide accept that electron, so circuit completed. So we can say that in dry cell, if there is a connection, it is a spontaneous process, a spontaneous reaction occur. But in many reactions, they are, there are many reactions which do not occur spontaneously. And that can be occurred in electrochemical cell by applying electricity from external source. So by applying external energy, electrolytes undergo chemical decomposition. And this process is called electrolysis. So what is electrolysis? If we summarize, then we can say that the process of chemical de decomposition of an electrolyte in its molten state or in aqueous solution by passing electric current through it is called electrolysis. So here is an example. I take sodium chloride as electrolysis. When sodium chloride melt, melted down or in aqueous solution, it produces sodium ion and chloride ion. So due to the flow of current, flow of external current through the dissolved salt, chlorine it is negatively charged and anode is positively, positively positive side. That's why chlorine reached to the anode, it donate electron, it donate electron and produce chlorine gas. And we get, we find bubbles of chlorine gas on the anode. On the other hand, sodium, sodium reached to the cathode, sodium is positively charged sodium is positively charged and cathode is negatively charged. That's why it sodium when it reaches to the cathode, it accepts electron and produce metallic sodium. So at first we take sodium chloride and by passing electricity, we get metallic sodium at cathode and chlorine gas at anode. So we can say that chemical decomposition of electrolytes, that means sodium chloride undergoes. So this process is called electrolysis. So we can say that electrolysis is a process in where by applying external source of energy, there occur dissociation of electrolytes. Here are, here are the reactions. Sodium plus accept electron and we get metallic sodium. Chlorine ion, donate electron. It produces chlorine atom. We know that chlorine is, bi is not monoatomic. It is biatomic. So that's why two chlorine atom combine with each other and form chlorine gas. It's diatomic. So what are the applications of electrolysis? In modern chemistry, electrolysis technique is done in extraction and refining of metals, electrolytic reduction of metals from their compounds. Number three is electroplating. This is mostly important for electrolysis. Electroplating is done by electrolysis process. So here are some questions for practice. Number one is why it is called a dry cell. Number two, can dry cell be recharged? Number three, why ammonium chloride is used in dry cell? Number four, why is electrolysis is used in the real world? So thank you very much and hope you will be okay. And I think if you have any query, you write down on the comment box and stay home and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you very much.